Lyndon B. Johnson is very similar to Joe Biden. How are they the same? They're both Democrat socialists. Lyndon B. Johnson was the majority leader in the Senate. Does that sound familiar? He was vice president to Kennedy. Joe was vice president to Obama. He was appointed as the president after JFK was assassinated, then he was elected. His big socialist programs were the Great Society. The Great Society were big government programs to address education, medical care, urban problems, rural poverty, transportation, Medicare, Medicaid, food stamps, and welfare the Office of Economic Opportunity, and big labor and labor unions. Now, LBJ had the Great Society, but Joe Biden had Build Back Better, and he still is working on it. The largest public investment in social infrastructure and environmental programs that is actually finishing what FDR started that LBJ expanded on, and Joe Biden is attempting to complete. I'm sure she'll be very shocked that, I, that, that I'm saying this, which is we agree with Majority Taylor Green, which is not something that we say very often. Over the weekend, the Congresswoman, uh, Majority Taylor Green, criticized Binomics as being in line with the FDR's creation of Social Security, Lyndon Johnson's creation of Medicare. She also bizarrely attacked Binomics because it's reducing poverty in rural areas. We agree with her all around. Is Bidenomics simply more trickle down? Inquiring minds definitely want to know. Or should I say the people at the lower rung of the economic ladder? They want to know because there are so many talking heads and those in the Biden administration trying to convince people that all is well in the economy. Well, there's more work ahead earlier this week. The Washington Post suggested Republicans may have to find something else to criticize me for. Now that inflation is coming down, maybe they'll decide to impeach me because it's coming down. My dad used to say at the end of the month, the question is, you just have a little, after you pay all your bills, you have just a little breathing room, a little breathing room, a little left over. Folks, that's Bidenomics. I knew we couldn't go back to the same failed policies when I ran. And so I came into office determined to change the economic direction of this country, to move from trickle-down economics what everyone on Wall Street Journal and Financial Times began to call Bidenomics. I didn't come up with the name. I really didn't. I now claim it, but they're the ones who used it first. I got asked by a press person this morning, getting on a helicopter in Washington, why, when I asked you about Bidenomics a long time ago, you said you didn't know what it was. I said, I didn't name it Bidenomics. I didn't realize the economist in the Wall Street Journal did. But I think it's a plan that I'll, I'm happy to call Bidenomics. And guess what? Bidenomics is working. Shut up, stop complaining. Doesn't matter if you work in two and three jobs to make ends meet. Shh, don't say nothing because the 2024 election cycle is coming. Don't spoil it for the Democrats, please, with your lived experiences. Big mama, big papa, stop complaining. Life is good. But life is especially good for you if you are inside the bubble. And if you are the ultra, ultra wealthy in this country, but if you are the everyday average citizen, things are not going so well for you, or at least it is a struggle. Come with me, let's go deeper. As the Lever News reports, Bidenomics isn't working for working people. And this is part of the article. Biden promised to build back better, but even as the economy recovers, Workers are being left behind. Thank you, Lover, for being willing to tell the truth and not get caught up in all of the hype. Now, according to President Biden, this is a direct quote from the president. Today, the U.S. has had the highest economic growth rate leading the world economics since the pandemic, end quote. But that is not translating in the lives of everyday people. Folks are more food insecure. One salary cannot support a family of four. The struggle is absolutely real in communities across this country. But you can't get the folks in D.C., especially on the Democratic side, to admit that. Because to admit that, they would have to admit that more needs to be done to help people and that we have the means to do it. 
but it's not being done. You see, the data doesn't comport with lived experiences. I mean, the data that the administration is putting out doesn't comport with how people are living in real life. I'm not talking about TV, but I'm talking about real life folks. Now, food insecurity is at an all time high. And according to data released last month, food insecurity is at the highest level since President Biden took office. More reporting coming from the lever. Average finance hardships in 2023 is worse than it was over the last three years. I want you to wrap your minds around that. Now, I agree with the lover's analysis. We do, in fact, have a humanitarian crisis. This is what the lever is putting out there, and it is absolutely true. The fact that people are finding it harder to make ends meet and that they and the fact that they are not certain that they're going to enjoy meals every single day is a problem in this country. So no matter what the stale numbers indicate, it is more important to take the pulse of the people in the hoods. And obviously this administration and the Democrats are not willing to do that. And oh, by the way, y'all know I ain't gonna let the Republicans off the hook. The federal Republicans are really no earthly good at this moment. Now, President Biden promised to build back better. He said that he was going to build from the middle out and from the top down. But guess what, sisters and brothers and family and friends, that is not working according to plan. And according to Biden and the Democratic caucus, folks in everyday America should just stop complaining and hush up with all of that because things are going just fine. You know what? Telling the American people who are suffering that things are going just fine is not only cruel, it's delusional. And that dog don't hunt, as they used to say in the country. It will not hunt in 2024. People of this country, no matter how they roll, Republican, Democrat, Independent, Green Party, no party, deserve a lot better than what they're getting now. And they, we must continue to make those demands. Do better, Democrats and Republicans. Lord, have mercy on your souls.